Well, we put a video out saying that we were going to do a virtual learning yard and ask for you folks to uh, send us some questions. And boy, did you. We've got a lot of great questions. They were all sort of categorized into three main categories. Uh, and so I selected kind of three questions that spoke for everybody. So let's get right into it. Uh, question number one from Julie M. Uh, Julie asks, what am I looking for during these late summer inspections? And what a great question. You know, as we get this far into the year, we ask ourselves, what is it that we need our bees to be doing? What is it that I should be looking for? Uh, and while it might get a little complicated, I kind of want to break it down into three main things. And these are all situation based. And what do I mean by that? Number one, what is your brood situation? Number two, what is your food situation? And number three, what is your box situation? While we could spend hours and hours on all three of those, we will as the season continues, but let's keep it simple right now. As you're getting inside and doing these inspections, what is your brood situation? Number one, is there brood? Is there cat brood? Is there open brood? Is there eggs? We've got to have that right now. We don't want any kind of queen failing issues or queenless colonies. We don't want to drag that further on down the road. We want to get ahead of that as soon as we possibly can. Now we've had some rough weather here in Ohio and queens have kind of been quelled down. They really haven't wanted to really go gangbusters and brood up. What we've noticed in the last week or so, they're really starting to pick back up. Um, so what is the brood situation out here? Uh, in our, some of our main colonies here at the farmyard, what we're finding is it looked like there was, uh, there was a, a delay and a point in pause where everything just kind of slowed down. And then over the last two weeks, it started to pick back up again. What we see with that is number one, we see a lot of capped brood. Okay, so we're, gonna make, we're making sure that all those next babies that come down the line that they're already in place. Those are going to be hatching out and they're hatching out every day. So a fresh replenishment of bees are happening nonstop right now. We have capped brood, we have open brood, and we also have eggs. So for now, for the next three weeks or so, we at least are, can expect emerging bees inside of the colonies. And that's important because that'll continue to grow out that colony. Now, in colonies who were a little bit behind on food, whether we were behind on feeding them, um, or they weren't getting any outside nutrition coming in in the form of pollen and nectar, they really, really slowed down. Colonies that didn't get the full nutritional attention that they needed, they're just not brooding up as well as the other colonies, and we can see it right now. Um, so that's a really important thing we, we gotta keep in mind. As you might have seen, and as you look around you, you're seeing goldenrod, you're seeing um, ironweed blooming, you're starting to maybe even see some early asters. So there is food now just starting to come in. If everything goes right, it's gonna keep heading in that positive direction for brood. And we could be looking at another three to six weeks of brood, brood rearing. And that would be really ideal here. We'll talk about what happens if they're getting too big a little bit later in the season. But right now we're just making sure everything is moving forward. So what's the brood situation? We have eggs, we have larvae, We've got cat brood. The situation is they're moving forward. The colonies who weren't getting a lot of food, they're behind a little bit. That brings us to number two. What is our food situation in the colonies? What you ideally would be seeing is you would be seeing some honey storage. You would have capped over honey inside of these frames, especially over where the brood areas are. Hopefully, colonies that are really chugging along and moving forward, you're going to see that honey on the outside of the box, the, out, the outer frames, they're gonna start packing those out and then working their way in to full frames of honey until that brood nest starts to eventually constrict. They will kind of downsize on their own, but for right now, we wanna make sure that the bees have internal food, they have that in storage form, which is honey that's capped on the outside um, of the frames. Hopefully, where the brood is, if the brood situation's correct, then we've got food storage above where all the brood is so they can continue to feed all of the young. If the brood situation wasn't correct, we might also see that the food situation wasn't correct, that there is no stored nectar. There's very little or no stored pollen. 
we did see some of that. Depending on when the splits were made, when we were expecting queens to return, we can have that. Colonies that had swarmed out, um, colonies that you have that maybe had swarmed and were looking to requeen, if they got caught in that cold, wet snap that we had or that extreme heat, you know, maybe you have a queen who didn't get mated well or she didn't come back at all. And the colony is really starting to kind of downsize and get very, very small and very, very lean. As you look around, you might not see any food at all inside of the colony. So the food situation is very important. Um, if you find a colony that, yes, they're our queen, right? Yes, they are making some brood, but they're, they're just not getting along. They're not getting along as fast as you would like them to. I would highly encourage you to get some feed on them. As you guys know, we love the bucket feeders specifically for this. It just simulates that trickle effect. Those buckets, they, they seem to just stimulate that queen and that colony. It almost uh, reminds them that incoming flow is happening inside of that colony and then they react accordingly. Right now we have colonies um, that, are, that are actually drawing out some comb right now. Brand new comb they're drawing because there is that little bit of a flow coming in. Just a little bit of flow coming in, that little bit of trickle. It's a, it's a, it's a completely different game inside of the colony than when there is no forage. When there's no forage coming in, they stop brood rearing, they stop drawing comb, and even though it's mid-August, these bees are still starting to draw some comb, which is a very valuable tool this late in the year. How can we keep that moving forward? We can keep some feed on there. There's lots of different ways to feed your bees, and we use a couple different ways. We use frame feeders and we use bucket feeders. If we were to put frame feeders inside of mature colonies right now and fill them up, what they're likely going to do is just backfill the brood nest with as much food as possible. That can be a problem here in a couple weeks as they start to downsize. However, a bucket feeder with thick syrup, like a three to one, at least a two to one on there, what that does, it, again, it, it simulates incoming nectar. It'll keep them moving forward. It'll keep the queen laying. It'll also encourage them to continue drawing comb, which is very, very important as we work toward our winter size for the colonies. As you guys know, we really prefer double deeps or a story and a half. That's what we like. So depending on the size of your colony right now, how much brood that they have, how many empty frames may be still left uh, in your equipment, let's think about putting some feed on there. So not only they have some feed storage inside of the colony, but they continue to rear brood and draw comb to get closer towards the finish line. I would much rather have to pull bees back and slow them down later in the year than to just try to push, 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 try to get them uh, to a finish line that they may never be able to accomplish. Okay, so that was number two. Number two was what was the food situation? Number three, what is the box situation? You're thinking, what do you mean box situation? You know, most of you are in love with our EnduroHive wax dipped equipment. You already know all the ins and the outs of that. A lot of you have already bought in your hive kits. You already have all the equipment you already need. But what happens if you start to run out of room? That can happen. You might say, well, they're just barely getting, uh, they're, they're on the borderline. Do we add a box? Do we let them cruise a little bit? Which, which way should we go? We're gonna answer that a little bit more in the third question. But for now, this is what we're going to say. What is the box situation? As you are looking into the box or boxes that they are in, are they 40% full? Are they 70% full? Are they jammed full? And they're all over the front and bearding. An easy way, you crack the lid, you look straight down. How many seams of bees do you see? When you are looking at the frames put together and you look straight down through, do you see bees looking up out at you? As you open up those frames and look, what kind of coverage is there? on those frames. When you get down to where the brood is in the colony, are they completely covered? What we want is that bottom box. We want that bottom box to look pretty impressive. When you open up that box, you say, whoa, there's a box of bees, okay? If they're working into that second deep still, that's totally fine. And you might find they've got three, maybe four of the frames kind of busy. The rest of the frames are kind of, ah, they're playing with, they're not quite fully there. I would look at the frames and see, are they drawing that comb out? If they're not drawing any comb out at all right now, 
and they're kind of feels like they're just in a really big single and they're just flirting with that top box, I would highly encourage you to get some feed on them. Encourage them to continue moving forward, drawing out that comb and stim stimulating that queen to lay. That's really important. But the box situation, remember, what do we need for the winter time? Let's think from that point and then go backward. Like I mentioned, I like two deeps or one deep and one medium. That's what we call a story and a half. So how close are your bees to filling out that space right now? Now, right here in Hopewell, Ohio, we're just east of Columbus. The way the weather forecast looks, we've got probably two very solid, complete brood cycles still ahead of us. All right, that's plenty of time to fill out that next deep box. And I think that they will. Um, what we're going to do is just make sure we keep feed on anybody who are, it's borderline. They may or they may not get there. We're gonna make sure we keep feed on there because we want them to get into those double deeps. Okay, so what is your box situation? Do they need more room? Are they satisfied with where they're at right now? Are they continue to go in the right path? Are they slowing down? Refer back to the first two situations and I think that'll help you decide, is it time to put another box on? Are they going to make sure they've got room to go? We had some colonies out there that we looked at this morning. They were, they were jam packed in both boxes, right? They, they, they were just even, there was some, some queen cells, but they were all open. Nothing was charged. It's getting so late. It's like, they think they want to possibly swarm, but they just, they're like, ah, I don't think we've got it in us. So they are getting very jammed up. Um, some of those colonies are growing very large in those cases we chose a little different path. I don't want to confuse you with where you're at. The bees were so big, we had two options. We can add another box on top um, or we can split them out, all right? And I think what we saw there is going to bring us into our third question, all right? So to wrap up this question here, the three things that you're looking for during your late summer inspections is number one, what is your brood situation? Is she laying? Is there all stages of larvae and capped brood? Are they moving forward or are they falling behind? That leads you into the next situation. Number two, the food situation. Is there stored food inside of the colony or is it a ghost town? Make a move and then uh, act accordingly. Get some feed on there. Think about even putting some small pieces of pollen patty on to just keep them moving forward. I would not recommend just blindly putting pollen patties on put on only as much as they can eat in a week's time, and then add more as we go. We wanna keep hive beetles at bay. Thank God, it's been a beautiful season. We've seen very little to no hive beetles at all, and we wanna keep it that way, all right? And then the third thing, the box situation. Do they have room to grow into that double deep? Is there way too much room, right? Let's make sure that we, they have the appropriate space inside of the colony to continue to grow. We don't want all the bees on the outside of the box bearding because there's nothing for them to do and it's hot. Worst case scenario, um, we can make a move and give them some more equipment to give them something to do, but possibly work on getting some combs drawn. That brings us to um, our next question. Our question here is from Michaela. Um, is it too late to add a honey super? What a great question. Hey, you like what you see? Are you interested in the full Q&A? and the Learning Yard live videos, hey, consider joining the Nature's Image Farm YouTube membership. There, you'll have access to a lot more Learning Yard videos, Q and A's, and live hive inspections. I know you'll love it. We'll drop a link below where you can join and become a member of the Nature's Image Farm YouTube channel.